Hi, in this video, we'll talk about vitamin A. Vitamin A is a fat soluble vitamin, and vitamin A is derived from carrots. Carrot is the major source of vitamin A among the vegetables. And other than carrots, there is cheese, eggs, papaya, bell peppers, pumpkin, avocado, and even from fish, we can derive vitamin A. Now, vitamin A, the main Pro vitamin for vitamin A is beta carotene. Beta carotene is derived from carrot. Now, this beta carotene is processed in several ways. Let us understand the structure of beta carotene. It has two beta ion rings marked in this red circle, and it has a polyprenoid chain which is joining these two beta ion rings. Now, these polyprenoid chain would be cleaved enzymatically in specific region to give rise to retinal. Now, this is basically vitamin A. So from one beta carotene, essentially two molecules of vitamin A can be produced. Now, vitamin A can be uh, converted or interconverted into different formats, like from retinol and retinal, they interchange with each other. And from retinal, it is a one-way conversion to retinoic acid. Retinoic acid is a super important signaling molecule important for several physiological processes, which we would not talk about in this video. Now, let's say we eat a carrot and see from this carrot how the vitamin A is absorbed and processed by our uh, digestive system and how it is metabolized and how it is utilized by our body. So, when we eat the carrot, it is getting digested and the beta carotene is getting uh, somehow metabolized into the intestine. Now inside the intestine, the beta carotene would be cleaved or let's say further processed by an enzyme known as dioxygenase, which would cleave beta car carotene and ultimately give rise to retinal, right? Now this retinal is packed in micelles and from that it is absorbed along with the fats in the intestinal villi. Now from there it goes to the liver. Inside the liver and inside the liver cells it is stored in a format of retinal palmitate. Now whenever it is required it is re released in the blood and with specific uh, retinal binding protein which serves as a carrier it is transported into the various location of the body where vitamin A is required. Now, vitamin A is super important for vision. And for next few moments, we would spend our time to understand how vitamin A is so important for vision and what happens when in case of vitamin deficiency. So here is our eye. And we know at the back of our eye, the main screen which helps to display the images are retina. Inside the retina, there are several kinds of cells like rod cell, cone cells. Rod cells give us uh, sensitivity towards low light, whereas cone cells help in color vision. Now we talk about rod cells. Inside the rod cells, there is the main pigment called rhodopsin. Now, rhodopsin is nothing but a G protein couple receptor. Now this rhodopsin, inside this rhodopsin, it has a structural unit, which is nothing but vitamin A derived retinal. 11, it's, and it's in a 11 cis format when there is absolute dark situation. When light falls on these rhodopsin, it undergoes a conformational change. 11 cis retinal becomes all trans retinal. And this conformational change has consequences. Now, due to the conformational change in rhodopsin, a G protein associated with rhodopsin, which is known as transducin, gets activated. Now, once transducin is activated, as it is a GS kind of signaling regime, the G alpha subunit gets dissociated from this complex and move in a membrane bound fashion and activates a particular phosphodiesterase known as cyclic GMB phosphodiesterase. Now, what does cyclic GMB phosphodiesterase do? As the name suggests, it would convert cyclic GMP to a non cyclic form. But what's the consequence of that? Normally what happens when there is absolute dark, there is a lot of sodium entry from cyclic nucleotide gated channel. And cyclic nucleotide gated channel requires cyclic GM before their operation. Now when there is light, 
what happens is the cyclic GMP phosphodiesterase is activated via this transducin molecule and transducin is itself activated by light. So a lot of cyclic GMP which is important for the channel activity of cyclic nucleotide gated channel is now getting converted to GMP and that's how the cyclic nucleotide gated channel is no more open and this change lead to an electrical change in the rod cells which bring about or which which kind of transduce the signal to the higher order neurons of the visual system and that's how we can see now vitamin a deficiency leads to several situations like nyctalopia xeropthalmia etc nyctalopia means night blindness so normally these rod cells are super important for low light vision and they give us sensitivity for visualizing things in low light now under normal circumstances this is how your eye look like but in case of night blindness your uh, level of these vitamin a is already deficient and that's why too much rhodopsin is not functional it's difficult to see under low light situation second condition is xeropthalmia where there is a dryness of the conjunctivita conjunctivita becomes dry thick and wrinkled not only that the conjunctivita gets keratinized and loses its normal transparency and the dryness spreads all over the cornea right here you can see there is an opaque structure or op opacity is developed in the specific region of these cornea now when when xeropthalmia persists for a very long time it leads to keratomalacia which is even severe format of that in that what happens is there is a softness of cornea and people often use the term that cornea is melting down opacity develops corneal infection is increased and there is overall a huge problem in the eyesight and in chronic cases there could be absolute blindness other than that vitamin a has very important roles in terms of uh, maintaining the integrity of the skin cells and skin cell production in absence of vitamin a skin cell become very dry and there are skin blemishes and this kind of phenomena is like very similar to a dry and rugged skin of a toad which is phrenoderma and the scientific name of this toad indian toad is known as phrenoderma and that's why this disease is known as phrenoderma now other than these kind of uh, effects vitamin a is found to be very important for maintenance of repair and maintenance of the skin it is also important in differentiation of stem cells and other tissue differentiation formats it has been shown by several medical studies that having good amount of vitamin a in your diet every day lowers the risk of your heart attack and definitely vitamin a is a very good antioxidant and it reduces the harmful effect of superoxide hydroxyl or peroxide radicals in that respect vitamin a is super important for our own body's metabolism and proper functioning of our body now let's talk about a little about how we can understand that vitamin a deficiency happens there are some easy ways that you can also do and there are like biochemical tests for that so one easy way of detect detecting vitamin a deficiency is dark adaptation test imagine a situation when you are coming from a light room to a dark room you immediately adapt right and you can see start seeing things in dark as well because your rod cells are now active and they they give you the sensitivity towards low light situation so in this test same thing has been done let's say you are you can see this object in a light room and suddenly you're transferred to another room which is absolutely dark and then the time is counted till which you can see the things inside the dark room properly now in case of vitamin a deficiency this time is prolonged than a normal situation other than that what people do is measure the level of retinal binding protein since it's a fat soluble vitamin it is not going to be present in the blood in free format it is always conjugated with retinal binding protein 
and also directly detecting the vitamin A level in serum is also another way. In case of deficiency, the serum level falls below 25 microgram per deciliter. I mean, this is the normal level of uh, vitamin A and it falls way be below that. And that is how we can understand vitamin A deficiency happened. So in this video, in this 10 minutes, we have really covered sources of vitamin, metabolism of vitamin, functions of vitamin A, deficiencies that are associated with vitamin A, diagnosis of vitamin A deficiency, etc. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and do let me know how you like my videos in the comment section. And your feedback is really valuable and it would help me to improve the content. Thank you.